Hello and welcome to Google Sites vs. WordPress, an exploration of free website production platforms. Today's discussion is multifaceted. First, I will touch on a brief history of website production platforms. Then I will discuss the basic language and interfaces needed to create the structure of a website, the amenities each of these free website production platforms offers, and which platform may be the right fit for you. Before platforms like WordPress and Google Sites, creating a web page required users to know HTML. Through sites like AngelFire in the mid-1990s, users input HTML into a sort of compiler to create a website. The process was simple but tedious. A user entered the HTML coding, saved the file, and then the program created or updated the web page after the file was saved. So what is HTML? HTML is simply an acronym and it stands for Hypertext Markup Language and it is the coding that is used to structure a web page. So what does HTML code look like? To find out, we can go to just about any website on the internet. In this case, I have picked cheese.com because cheese is awesome. And what we want to do is locate a dead space on the web page. By dead space, I just mean an area that is not actively being used for interaction. And on cheese.com, that area is going to be over here on the right hand side. I'm going to right click to open a menu, select view page source, and a new tab is going to open, which displays the HTML coding for that page. The more content a page has, the more intricate and expansive a page is, the longer the coding is going to be. Coding must be entered to designate the size and font of text, which images to use, where content is placed on the page, and even to control how menus function. Modern platforms like WordPress and Google Sites allow users to easily create websites using pre-existing templates and drag and drop manipulation. This is done using a GUI. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. Essentially, a GUI is a visual representation of a website's coding, which allows users to interact with the computer using graphics instead of inputting lines of code. So let's look at a couple examples of graphic user interfaces. I've just gone to christmas.com. Right in the middle of the screen here, you can see my cursor. I'm going to scroll over the graphic for spring home decor. When I do, you'll see that the background will turn a lighter shade of gray and the words spring home decor will switch from red to black, just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing to shop for Easter. And it also switches in the same manner. Drop down menus are another example of GUIs. So I'm going to scroll up here to the top under Tree accessories, we get a menu. Same for reeds and garland. In fact, all these up here are drop down menus. Clicking to open a drop down menu triggers specific coding in the website script, which causes the visual representation to change, just like the background and the color of the words changes for spring home decor. Old web page builders like AngelFire in 1996 originally required users to input HTML coding before they would format a page and make it viewable. Today, services like Google Sites and WordPress allow users to create and view websites without having to know HTML at all. They do this through GUIs. In other words, users can interact with these services through GUIs to create web pages. The services then generate the HTML code for the user behind the scenes as the website components are manipulated. The latest versions of Google Sites and WordPress are powerful platforms which deliver useful tools for website creation, but they didn't start out that way. The latest version of WordPress, version 5.5, came out in 2020. WordPress is the official successor to a little-known platform called B2 Cafe Log, which came out 20 years ago. B2 Cafe Log was originally a blogging platform. 
As we can see from this B2 archive post from 2001, it was originally described as a classy news slash weblog tool. Google Sites is a newer platform than WordPress, but it also morphed from a predecessor into what it is today. Actually, the platform endured three mutations before it finally became Google Sites. In 2006, JotSpot was an up-and-coming service which blended wikis with applications like Excel and Word. Google took notice of the platform and acquired it later that year, renaming it SpotOn. The platform underwent a couple years of development before it finally emerged in 2008 as Google Sites, a platform Google announced as one which allows non-technical users to organize and share information such as web links, calendars, photos, and video presentations. So what is it like to create a website through a service like Google Sites? When you bring up the website, this is the page you'll be looking at. If you've never created a site through that service before, then you're not going to have existing sites available. These are ones I've already made. We can go up here and start with a blank template, or we can choose a basic template to start with. I'm going to go ahead and click on blank template. And it's going to come up with essentially nothing. It is our task then to go ahead and insert different uh, components to create our website. But as you can see, there is no HTML code to input. Everything is done by dragging and dropping or clicking to add layouts or components or images or embed videos. But you don't actually have to say that you're inputting a video through HTML code. So I'm going to go up here and we're just going to give our page um, a generic name, generic page one. And uh, let's look at the different themes that we can apply. It supplies you with several. Let's go with impression. Okay, and we're going to go back up to insert and we're going to look at the different layouts that we can apply. Let's go with this one. and. Immediately, you can see it automatically drops that component underneath your title. And we're going to add some photographs. So we click the plus sign. We go to upload if you want to upload a photo. And we'll just select a photo to put in here. And we'll go ahead and wait for that to load. It takes a second to actually upload to the site. And we can add a couple more in here. It's taking these photographs a little bit longer to upload, I think, because they're actually photos that I've taken. So they're kind of a large size. They were taken with a 24 megapixel camera. So if you're just uploading something you found from the internet or something from your phone, then it's not going to take nearly this long to upload, provided you have a stable internet connection. So, okay, so we have some photographs in there now. Let's see what else we could add. Let's do some collapsible text. We can talk about our photos. So we'll just put a title in here and this will be the part that um, people click on when they want to see the rest of the text. So click here to see text. All right. And keep in mind, every time I make a change here, every time I add a component or move it around or manipulate it, uh, the website is making changes to the HTML code behind the scenes. So it's nothing that you have to do yourself. So this is generic text there we go got something in there okay so one neat feature about google sites is it allows you to preview what the page is going to look at look like and it allows you to preview what the page is going to look like on various formats so what it's going to look like on a tablet or a smartphone or a desktop monitor and to look at that we go up here to the preview icon click that and it opens up the page so as to see for us to see what it would look like um, through the various platforms. So we can go down here. This is the menu and click on phone. And if you were viewing my page, this page that we've created on a phone, this is essentially what it would look like. And then we have tablet mode. So this is what it would all look like on a tablet. 
and then here's the laptop or desktop monitor view. We can click to expand that text. All right, so you just hit exit preview and it brings you right back to your page so you can begin editing it. So previous to this, when you wanted to create a site, say in 1996 with Angel Fire, you literally just had a wall of text, a wall of HTML code that you had to edit. Then you had to publish the page to see what it looked like. You don't have to do that with this. Before you even publish the page, you can actively drag and drop things exactly where you want it. You can resize things. And then when you have everything in the position and functioning like you want it to function, then you can go up here and you can click publish. So let's give it a name. We'll say English um, one, two, three, four, five, six is the name of this. Oh, it's already taken, really? Eight. There we go. And we're going to publish. And so now anyone that has this link can go ahead and, and view the site. We'll go up here and we'll go view published site. Opens up a new tab for us. And here's our website. Simply copy and paste this URL and email it, text it, whatever, to anyone you'd like to see your page. And there you go. A couple drawbacks to this. Um, one being, if you're looking at opening up a store, Google Sites has limited capabilities for uh, monetization. So it's going to be difficult. You have to essentially use other components in the Google Suite to be able to do this. You can't, to do that, you can't do it directly through Google Sites alone. So that is definitely one drawback. Also, you can't manipulate uh, codes like CSS code by yourself because it doesn't have the interface. It doesn't allow you to actually manipulate the code yourself. So it specifically relies on um, kind of drag and drop placement, um, dragging to resize things or to manipulate where they are on the screen. So it doesn't give you that detailed uh, control to edit things like JavaScript or CSS. So now that we've seen what it's like to create a web page through one of these platforms, how do you decide which is better for you? And that really depends on what you want to do with the website. So let's go over some of the pros and cons for each. First, let's talk about cost and pricing. Google is free. As long as you have a Gmail account, that you have access to the Google suite of apps and you are then capable of integrating any of those applications in the Google suite into your Google Sites web page. So that's definitely a pro. However, it doesn't allow you to integrate third party applications into the web page. So with WordPress, you have free plans, but then you also have paid plans as well. So you have a personal plan all the way up to e-commerce e plan, starting at $4 to $8 to $25 to $45. So what are the amenities you get with those paid features? One is live chat support. Google is a free service, but you don't get the live chat support with that service. What you get are uh, basically a help center that you can go to to search for answers. But with WordPress, you have a 24-7 live chat for support. So if you have any issues, then you can address them with a person right then and there instead of having to search for the answers yourself and hoping you find them. Another difference is the capabilities of personalization. So Google has a limited amount of options as far as themes that you can apply to your website. WordPress has over 250 themes. If you're looking to create a website which showcases your photography or your writing skills in a blog form, then Google Sites may be a good option for you. If you're looking for a way to sell a product or monetize a hobby, then Google Sites may not be the best option for you. You may be looking to go with a service like WordPress simply because it allows you to integrate third-party applications into your website.